Hi, Tim Skell here, ABB HVACR Application Engineering. Today we're looking at the fault history in the ACH580, specifically the diagnostic capabilities in the drive. The drive can actually hold 32 of the most recent faults and events. In today's video, we're going to focus on the fault aspect of the events. So a fault is something that prevents the drive from running. So the drive was running and something within the drive stopped it. Not a normal safety, not a high static or vibration trip safety opening up, but something within the drive stopped it from running. Maybe the drive was too hot. Maybe there was a ground fault because a wire got worked its way loose and or shorted out. So this is something that stops the drive from running. So let's dive into the faults of the ACH580. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on menu. I'm gonna go down to diagnostics, makes sense. Faults, diagnostics. Scroll down to fault and event log, and I have my choice of faults or other events. Today we're focusing on the faults, things that prevent the drive from running when it should be running. And what I had done today is at 2.30 p.m., and we've got seconds here, so we got hours, minutes, seconds, and we have a list of faults in this drive that are based on newest first, most recent first. At 2.30 p.m. in 14 seconds, I had created a control panel loss fault on my demo case right here, just to illustrate this. And then you can see at 2.32 and 31 seconds, I had reset that fault. So I can see what the fault is, and I can see when it was reset. If I'm not sure what a control panel loss fault is, I can also go ahead and just hit the question mark, and it'll tell me what this is. It can also give me some hints and tips and tricks on what might have been the problem in the first place. So uh, I purposely removed my control panel from the drive while I was running in hand mode. However, if this had intermittently happened, well, maybe somebody had a bad connector between the control panel and the drive. So it gives you some, some tips and hints there. So let's take a look what was going on when that control panel loss fault happened. So in my case, again, it's control panel loss fault, but you can be coming up on a drive. Could be any, any fault that occurred to stop it from running. So come into here, I take a look at the details. I got the control panel loss. I got the name of the fault right here. There's a code right here, the 7081, but the beautiful part about the ACH580 drive is it gives you the fault name in plain English. You don't have to get a code and then have to get the user manual out and look up that code in the manual to figure out what kind of fault it was. So we'll tell you right there in plain English what it was. Sometimes if there's a different sets of scenarios that could cause a fault, there might be an aux code to help our tech support people out. But uh, in this case, it's a pretty self-explanatory, straightforward type of fault. I can see again, 2.30 p.m. this afternoon is when it occurred. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit and start taking a look at what information is available for me to see what was how the drive was responding, how, what it was doing at the time of fault. So I can see that that it was running at 41.09 hertz when it faulted. So I can see how fast it was running. I can see the DC bus voltage. DC bus voltage is always a handy item to have for troubleshooting because it can help give you some indication if maybe there's a problem on the incoming power quality to the drive that caused it to fault, or maybe you were trying to slow down a very large load too quickly and a lot of inertia that was regenning back to the drive that might've pumped up the DC bus voltage. So you got DC bus voltage there to give you some, some tips on, on how the drive was acting at the time of fault. I can see what the load of the drive was. Again, my little demo case motor, so it was only at 0.21 amps. Same thing with torque. It was only at three and a half percent torque because it's just a little demo. But traditional application, if I had an issue on the load side, maybe I had a bearing going out or something mechanical was going on after the drive with the motor or the application, you might see that current being a lot higher compared to the drive rating or the torque being a lot higher than it typically would be running at. So amps and torque will give you good guidance if there's a problem on the output side of the drive. I can take a look at my main status word, which I'll show you in a little bit here. So don't worry about that, just be in a hack. So we'll get you details in a bit. We got the digital input status. So it kind of tells me about all my IO. So this is specifically on my digital ends. So digital input one starts on the far right. So you read this right to left. So digital input one, two, and three were all open, but I can see digital input four and digital input five were both closed digital input six was open. So digital input four and five on my particular unit are both set up for safety interlocks. So yep, both my safeties were closed when the unit had faulted. Makes sense there. If I keep going down here, I can see the inverter temperature at fault. So I can see that the IGBTs we're only at 27 degrees Celsius, which is quite cool, which makes sense because I just have a little demo here. But if if I had a traditional application and maybe it faulted because it was a temperature or load related fault, that might have been 115 degrees Celsius, 120, depending on the particular drive and frame size. In 
Other areas where we talk about inverter temperature, we'll have it in percentage, so 100% equals fault. But in this case, we converted it directly to degrees Celsius to help with the uh, field technicians who are a little bit more experienced with drives and they understand what the temperature should be. So we have the units as degrees Celsius right here. We've got our speed reference. So this is how fast we're being told to run at the time of fault. So we're being told to run at 41.1 Hertz, which happens to still be my reference right now. And as we looked at it earlier, we were at 41.09 Hertz. So we we're basically at set point there. So that was good. And lastly, I can see the HVAC status word at fault. So I got a bunch of zeros and ones here again, reading right to left now. Sometimes I kind of feel like I'm Neo in the matrix and reading all the ones and zeros that are coming down the, down the screen. So in my case and our experienced tech support folks, they'll they'll be able to read this. So hey, this tells me I'm in hand mode, tells me I'm not in off or auto. The next couple of zeros tells me I'm not in override mode. I'm not doing any motor heating. This one here tells me that my damper uh, relay is, is good to go. It's closed. This zero happens to reserved. And then the next of the ones right in here, all tell me that, that my uh, run permissive and all my start interlocks are happy. I don't have any start interlocks or run permissives that aren't happy. So those are the definitions of those ones and zeros. But if you're not Neil from the matrix and you're not able to read all the ones and zeros coming down the screen, don't worry. That's not our intent or expectation. So when I need that extra level of detail, so the diagnostic screen I'm in right now is intended to give you that real quick, hey, here's all this information, really easy to read, really easy to find to navigate to. If you need that extra level of defining, hey, what are all these ones and zeros so I can really get down ne one next level, then I just simply back out to the parameters. So, uh, and you could have gone to the parameters in the first place. I like going to diagnostics first because it just has everything in a real easy list for me to look at. So I go to parameters, go to the complete list, go to group five, my diagnostics. You could listen to me click a bunch of times and go down to, 0589 quick little tip and trick is just to hit the up it'll take you to the bottom of the list so now there's that hvac status word we're just looking at so i could click view hey i just like i said here i'm in hand mode not in off not in auto not in override not in motor heating mode but i can scroll down and see that hey my damper relays happy I don't have any issues with my run permissives or start interlocks. Everything is good there. Also, we saw the uh, digital input status, the zeros and ones. We already saw that, but if you didn't remember that you had to read from right to left, it'll tell you right here, digital input one, two, and three were not close. They got zeros, digital input four and five were close. That's why they got ones there. They have six digital inputs on this particular drive there. So you can see digital input six is not made either. That main status word at time of fault was a hex on the other screen. Here's where you can see the definition of exactly what was going on so it tells me one means yes this was made zero means no it wasn't made so i wasn't tripped beforehand i was ready to run and it can kind of scroll through here and see all the different things that it'll tell me exactly when it faulted one of the ones i like to look at here is that it can tell see if there's any kind of active warning at the time of fault so was this something that came up slow as a problem the drive was giving me a warning before it faulted or is it something that happened quickly so in this case i just popped that control panel right off there was no warning for the drive so that's why that says zero there there was no warning given up but maybe it was a temperature related issue so the drive might have been throwing a over temperature warning for a while before it eventually had to fault out. Maybe the cooling fan had gone bad or maybe the drive had just gotten too dirty to cool itself. I can see that I'm at set point here. So you've got a lot of, a lot of details here that you can take a look at as part of your troubleshooting. So that's in, in group five of diagnostics. So again, if you want to, if you like parameters and you're used to just going straight to parameters, by all means, you're, you're very welcome when you're troubleshooting to go into the diagnostics and go there. But from, I like to be able to look at the whole history of the faults that have occurred. So that's where I like to go to that event and fault logger of diagnostics and just dive into it right there on the ACH 580 drive. So there you have it. If you got any questions, feel free to reach out to your local ABB drive specialist or your ABB factory regional application engineer. Thank you.